you don't already know me, my name is Spencer Arias. I am a second year doctoral student at Michigan State University, and I also teach composition um, as a private instructor. Um, I've been teaching using the software Zoom for approximately the past three years um, to a number of students who live in different states than me, and I have found it to be an incredibly effective tool. Um, I just wanted to give a couple quick tips and tricks. I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes, um, and we're going to just go. I just wanted to give a couple background information about Zoom if you're not already familiar with it. Um, Zoom is a free software. Um, there are paid versions that are free are uh, useful if you need to do larger things, but for basic one-on-one -on -one composition lessons, as you can see here, Zoom lesson Zoom is entirely free. Um, unlimited one-to-one -one meetings um, for an unlimited amount of time. Um, if you are doing larger groups, uh, you can host up to 100 participants um, in the free version, and it's 40-minute limit on group meetings. Um, so if you are trying to do this to teach a lecture class, the one thing that I might have to suggest is that you consider looking into uh, taking a break um, for a minute and then restarting, um, because as you can see here, unlimited number of meetings is, op is possible. If you are teaching at Michigan State University or at other universities that have um, that have deals with Zoom directly, um, then these, these limitations are probably not a problem. Um, but for those of you who are private composition instructors um, and they don't have Zoom um, already as part of your, um, as already part of your services, then this is, uh, this can be a free option that I think has been very useful for me as a private instructor um, outside of Michigan State University. So um, anyways, I, wanted, I just wanted to start there just to kind of give you uh, that background um, so that you know that Zoom is not cost prohibitive for your students or for yourself. Um, so I just wanted to give a couple of different um, tips and tricks um, that I have personally used um, when teaching private composition lessons. Um, and the most important one that I have found is actually just using screen share, um, using my own screen um, on my computer to teach whatever I needed to teach for the day. So to do that, all you have to do is press here on screen share, which can be seen at the bottom of the Zoom screen. Um, so when you click that, it comes up with this toolbox right here, um, and you can see a number of different options, um, desktop, whiteboard, iPhone, iPad via AirPlay, iPhone, iPad via cable, and then also individual windows that you might have open. If you click on one of the windows that, have, that are open, it'll only show your student that specific window, which can be handy um, if you are like me and tend to have a bunch of windows open. Um, but occasionally I find if I'm being organized um, that just using the whole desktop is more useful just because I can then show my entire desktop and not, um, I can show my entire desktop uh, and not have to think so hard about uh, switching to something and the student not being able to see what I'm doing. Um, Another important feature that Zoom has is the ability to share your computer sound. Um, so if you're teaching, as you know, music lessons, um, sound is an important imp important part of teaching. And so it's important to be able to share that. Um, also, if you're using YouTube videos, optimized screen share for video clips can be useful um, so that you can show your students um, YouTube videos of scores, such as score follower, and I'm going to show you an example of that right now. So I'm going to click on the desktop, and now I am currently um, I am currently sharing my entire screen with the video. Um, and uh, so what happens next is if you go into um, your web browser, um, you can go and, for instance, 
Um, let's just say we wanted to look at this Shelley Washington piece, Big Talk, which is really popular right now. Um, you can actually go directly into uh, your thing and you can go into full screen mode. Um, and I can actually uh, play that. And I'm going to play just a brief moment of that. And uh, they will be able to hear this. Now, you might not hear this in this video because I am screen recording this with, uh, um, because I am screen recording this with uh, the, with QuickTime. Um, but uh, if you uh, play the YouTube video and you have the share audio setting on, then your student will be able to hear that, which is super handy. Um, and I've found that to be a really effective teaching tool. Um, you can also use this to show PDFs of scores. Um, so if you're doing, um, this is just a peace of mind. Um, so if, for instance, you are um, wanting to show an example of something in, uh, in, the, in the lesson, you're more than welcome to do that and play the recording. And then you can both hear the recording and the student will be able to hear directly from your computer, um, which can be really handy when trying to share examples of scores um, that you're looking at. Um, finally, um, for instance, if you want to work directly into whichever music notation software I'm using Finale here, um, that is also an option. And uh, you should be able to use it directly into the software. I tend to not do that as much um, because I tend to use my own uh, digital p keyboard um, as a piano, as a, um, as a tool when I'm teaching just because I find that um, I have a little bit more control and I'm not spending so much time note entry, um, entering notes into, um, into Finale, which I think can be a not, uh, which tends to waste a lot of time in the lesson. And I don't really like that as much. So um, when you're done wanting to share your screen, you can just press stop share and that will effectively stop sharing that screen. So I wanted to then quickly move on to um, another functionality, which is um, sharing directly from your iPad, um, which I think is the tool that most teachers, I think, will find to be the most useful. Um, to do that, all you have to do is press share screen, um, click on the iPhone, iPad via AirPlay, um, and it will actually give you on-screen instructions um, of how to connect to that. So um, if you go into your iPad and you, uh, uh, with your finger, um, scroll down from the top right corner, you'll see the screen mirroring option. Um, and on mine, it comes up as Zoom Spencer's MacBook Pro. So I click on that. And now, as you can see, um, I have X, I can now show my iPad screen to my students. Um, so I'm using the program called GoodNotes, which is a um, software available in the App Store. Um, I believe it's like four, four or five dollars. Um, I've been using it for um, many of my classes and I've been using it for teaching as well. Um, I, I like this software because it comes with staff paper options. You can upload your own staff paper, you can upload PDFs and mark things up. Um, but um, if you have ever seen um, really beautiful, um, really beautiful handwritten things. You can, you can actually zoom into things and, um, you can even draw really closely in there and, uh, make, make your notation, um, at least for lessons look very clean. Um, and I've found that to be a really handy way of giving, um, you know, talking about music theory examples, but also talking, showing um, written music uh, notation uh, out so that when you need to express a topic um, that maybe you could easily show 
using notation software, um, it's sometimes easier to just hand write that out. And I think that that can be an incredibly useful tool. And because you can do that all in real time, I've never found that uh, the distance has ever gotten in the way of, um, of our learning. And that's, that's the goal here, isn't it? So um, the other thing that I use this for, the iPad for, is actually making comments on student scores um, in real time, which I've found to be really helpful. Um, so for instance, um, I'm just going to uh, go to one of my students' scores. I usually, within GoodNotes, I can also have notebooks for the students, which are really helpful so that I can go back and look to see at what previous comments were, um, which kind of help keep a record of what I've been doing with my students. So I'm just going to go into this score um, for this brass band piece that a student of mine, Connor Johnson, has been using, and I can kind of show you the types of comments that I've made. Um, so as we were listening, as I was listening through this, I was going through and um, making comments, I was going through, and the student was able to see um, what I was doing on my iPad um, as I was going through. So for instance, um, at, right here um, at measure 23, I noticed that um, he has this measure of 3-4 at measure 22, switches to 4-4 four, four, um, at measure 23, and then to 6-8 at measure 24. Now, upon looking at that, the soprano cornet um, and the first horn um, and the xylophone, um, as you can see here, felt to me like they were acting more a, as a pickup. And I asked the student, well, you know, might you consider that this might, the 3-4 measure might make be easier for the for the trumpet player and the horn player, um, if that was the measure of 4-4 four, four, and the next measure was a measure of 3-4, or maybe even a measure of 6-8, depending on how he wanted to uh, group those things. Um, and so while I was listening, I noticed that immediately while I was listening, so I drew a giant line there and the student saw that. And I kept going and I you keep going um, and uh, I make various markings on the score as I'm listening to it. and and we go through and it helps me actually go back and uh, immediately while I'm listening, uh, make comments really quickly and efficiently. And so um, the, the student and has actually even made the comment that uh, they, they found that I was actually catching more in their music when I was teaching this way, as opposed to, um, when I'm looking at their computer screen and then making comments as I see them. But because I'm looking at the score almost as if it's printed on pieces of paper, um, the, I'm able to actually do that. And then I can actually even send all of my written comments to the student so that that way they can focus more on our conversation and less on trying to jot down notes um, into either their notation software or onto pieces of paper um, and that way we can focus more on the music making process and less on notation and less on, um, less on, uh, just like the nitty gritty of things and focus really just on, on what is happening in the music and, and how we can address these different things. And so that is really it. I, I, the nice thing about using Zoom for composition private lessons is that I found that um, it has allowed me to be more flexible with my students on time. Um, it has allowed me to, um, you know, if for some reason I'm sick or for some reason the student is sick but um, is uh, up for still having a lesson, um, we, we've been able to maintain that type of regular, um, regularity. Um, finally, uh, I think that uh, for many students, having um, access to um, this type of technology has allowed for more growth um, in private composition instruction because we can focus more on um, the composition and uh, they can see 
notation things as I can comment and I can just send them to them and their scores end up looking much nicer in the long run. Um, anyways, I think that that's really everything that I wanted to cover. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and I'd be happy to discuss um, anything, just other tips and tricks that I've found um, to be useful in, in using this software um, effectively. Anyways, um, I think that's all I have for you and uh, I'm going to sign off now. Um, please stay healthy and uh, uh, yeah, have a good night.